Hey buddy, welcome to Shark Jets. I'm Skid Vitz. So you wanna shard your bot. That sounds weird, doesn't it? Uh, well, before we start, unless you're uh, hosting your bot on like a thousand different servers, you probably don't need to watch this video, right? Because the, uh, the sharding kicks in automatically at a thousand hosts. So unless you're close to that, don't worry about this. This is way out of your league right now. Um, also, secondly, um, sharding happens. Like I said, it's automatic, right? It's going to detect that you're at a thousand servers and then it's going to shard to a second server. And what that means is it's going to basically take up double the resources that it was using at one, at one server. So if your bot was taking two gigs of RAM, you need to be on a server that can accommodate something taking four gigs of RAM. You know, um, it, that's what it's going to do. It's for every thousand, it's basically going to create a copy of itself and take up more of your system's resources. So if you're running this on a Raspberry Pi, I don't even need to mention that because by the time you get to a thousand hosts, you're going to be suffering. So you need to make sure that you're on a machine that is really beefy and capable of supporting multiple instances of your Discord bot. So now that we have that out of the way, it's really easy to do, super simple to set up. Watch the hands, watch the hands. Anyways, uh, let's get into it. But first, hit that like and subscribe button so I know you love me. Um, and now without further ado, let's do this. All right, just to prove there's nothing up my sleeve, I have downloaded Dabber Dino's Discord bot tutorial from GitHub, and I'm going to be use that, using that as the base to this video. So if you don't have a working bot, feel free to download this one and uh, follow along. So in Visual Studio, uh, I, like I said, I downloaded that code. The only change I've made is I've, of course, updated the config.json file to use my token and prefix whatever thingy. And also, I have added this on guild available method, which triggers when the server becomes available. Um, and it basically just sends me a message. So I like to have that to let me know everything is running. So uh, let's go ahead and run this. And in my Discord, it should start up here. Boom, 110, 110, we're good to go. All right, so that proves that the bot is working. So we gotta make just a few changes um, and we'll get through this real quickly. The first thing you want to do is take this Discord client and change it to a Discord sharded client. That lets the bot know to use the Discord sharded client instead of just the regular one. Bada bing, bada boom. The next thing, and this is probably the trickiest thing, is this next one, right? We have, uh, not this one, the next one down, the commands one. Right, the commands uh, is where we tell it to read all of our other commands that we create here in this commands folder, right? All of our cool commands. That's how that is done. And so since we're going to be using multiple clients, we need to turn this into a dictionary so that it keeps track of the commands for all of our clients. So the way we will do that is by just, uh, well, let me just delete this whole thing here. And we're going to make it an I read only dictionary. And then it's going to have an integer and the commands next. Oh, I hate this commands next extension. Right? And then it's called commands. Boom. So that's perhaps the most confusing part of this whole process is not forgetting to do this. Um, and then the next thing we need to do is our bot initializer here this this isn't going to work for us because we need this to be a task and the initializer is not a task so what we'll do is we'll just we'll just close this out for now and create a private async task and we'll just call it main for now and we will pass the same parameters as this initializer here so we have the dependency injection happening so I service provider services, we're just mimicking that 
initializer there, and then we'll open this one and get rid of that. And now we basically took what used to be the bot method and turned it into this other task, right? So then in the bot method, we'll just call that task main passive services, bam. And then we get this warning saying, hey, this, this is calling it a task, an async task, but it's not, doesn't have the await and blah, blah, blah. We just fix it, just come over here, use the discarded thing. This underscore equals blah, and that makes the error go away. Life is good. Now we'll just go down here a little bit and we'll see this where it says client equals new discord client. Now we made a change up top, right? We changed it into a discord sharded client. So let's just do the same there. Bam, that error goes away. And now we have this use interactivity right here, this client use interactivity. We need to make a change there too. And basically that is that now we're in a task, so everything has to be done. We're in an async task. So there's different versions of all of these. You can just change this to a use interactivity async. Now it's complaining because we're not using a wait. So we add a wait and that all goes away. Cool. Uh, same thing down here. We'll scroll down to where it says commands equals client, blah, 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 blah. We'll change this to async also. And then it'll complain about an await. And now that's fine. Now here's where we're going to have to make a little change, right? We're basically telling the commands to register all of our commands. So here's where we got to add everything into that dictionary um, so that all of the shards have access to all the commands. So we'll just do a for each here. And we'll say var cmd equals, well, that's not how it is. Uh, in commands dot values, right? So that's going to loop through all of the shards basically and do the same thing for all of that. So we'll go ahead and copy all these inside this for each, change it from commands to CMD. Okay, so for each sharded uh, server that it creates, it's going to loop through this and make sure that they all have access to all the commands that we've created. Uh, and then down here at the bottom, instead of calling client.connect async, we're gonna do client.start async. And we will of course await it. And that's it, right? That's all we have to do. Uh, we basically broke off all the logic that was in the bot initializer into this task. We made sure that we made our lists or dictionary out of all of these uh, command next extensions and added it as a discord sharded client. So that's all there is to it right now. Everything else stays the same as far as the bot knows. There's only one version of it uh, when it runs and so it will, it will use the sharded instance to do everything that it needs to do. So we'll go ahead and run it again, make sure it doesn't blow up. 117, there you go. It took us seven minutes to get it all running. So pretty easy. And if you had uh, multiple shards, of course this, well, I have it telling me which shard uh, is running in the, in the on guild available. Uh, we've got this section here that e.client.shard count will tell you how many shards you have and e.client.shard ID will tell you the ID of that particular shard. Now, uh, as we mentioned, uh, shards won't kick in until you hit a thousand servers. So uh, hopefully you're there and that's why you're watching this video. But that's all there is to it. And there you have it, quick and easy. Like I said, seven minutes tops. Talk to my ex. Anyways, um, <laughs> That's all there is to it. Like I said, if your server is not even close to a thousand users, there's really no point in doing this. I've done it just so that I know how to do it. Maybe you want to do it just so you know how to do it. Um, but uh, yeah, that's how you do it. Quick and easy. I hope this video has been helpful. If so, please make sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons and uh, I'll keep making videos. Until the next time, I'm still Skid Vis. Peace out.